And then I will get us kicked off. Uh, thank you everyone for being here at our uh, fifth steering committee meeting. Um, we are about halfway through the steering committee meetings and I would say we're approaching halfway through the process. Um, I sent out an agenda the other day um, and I'll review that real quick uh, so we could get, get everything in. I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, so here's where we are, uh, introduction and review of the agenda. Um, mm -hmm. What we hope to accomplish today, uh, look at our progress, uh, the visioning survey results, uh, and those will be in the next section too, uh, where we are. Um, Clark Kane hints has a few updates on, on some of the previous things that we've done, um, engagement hub update, and then a time for steering committee questions. Then the real meat of this meeting is going to be uh, talking about the visioning survey that closed on Sunday night. Uh, we gave a little buffer into Monday, but uh, roughly Sunday night. Um, and then we're getting ready for our open house at the end of the month at the library. Uh, that'll be November 30th from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, at the library, um, there are a few things to discuss on that, uh, just logistics, make sure we're prepared, and then general Q&A at the end of this meeting. Um, so with that being said, uh, Michael Sullivan, would you like to take over? Sorry, Thanks. we keep him muted as much as possible. <laughs> Important safety tip. Um, so uh, thanks, uh, Justin, and good to see everybody again uh, this month. Um, uh, Justin went over the agenda quickly, so I'm going to jump right into uh, the where we are section here. Uh, we've been working with Justin's office to um, uh, collect all the existing data that we need uh, to uh, prepare uh, the master plan and re-examination report, and also focusing on those uh, components of the data that is important uh, that are important for the um, open house on the 30th. So we've been working diligently to, to arrive at an existing zoning um, map and data set, uh, which is complicated by the various uh, former um, municipal distinctions. Uh, existing land use, we've been working on that, um, pulling together existing open space and mobility information. Um, mostly. Uh, we're also uh, compiling a, a lot of the other environmental uh, information as it comes in. Uh, there's an environmental uh, resource uh, inventory that's being uh, uh, compiled, so we're hoping to get most of, most of that information from that, that process. Um, in terms of the student uh, survey update, um, we've got uh, the student survey update, it closed uh, on the 16th of October. We've got initial um, results from Joe Getz's firm, JGSC, uh, that were attached to the agenda. Um, he's also attached the report outline uh, for his report, uh, which covers the subject matter uh, and the elements that are be, gonna be included in his report that will feed into the economic element. Uh, we also reattached uh, the August uh, economic development uh, information summary. Uh, we anticipate uh, Joe's report uh, at the end of the month, uh, end of November, uh, for review by the committee and anybody else in the municipality who's interested in looking at it uh, prior to him finalizing it, which we anticipate in- The end of November, first week in December. Right, right. Um, so that's that's happening. Um, any questions about the survey uh, status or? Yes, Kristen. Thank you. Um, a quick question. So thank you for sharing the summary. Um, the students that I had coordinated on coordinated with on campus to help encourage the response were interested um, and knowing the res results, am I free to share this preliminary observation to Pedro with them? As I'll let them know that there's a fuller report coming. Is, is this information that I can share with them? That's that's really not. Uh, I, it's I it's not it's, a decision for for us at CCH. That's a decision for the client. Okay, then I'll look at Louise and Justin. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that would. I see no reason not to share it with the students, no. It was specifically, it was the undergraduate student government community um, community affairs chair, which um, I, I was 
pleased that they were interested in seeing what the results were. So um, I'll share this with them and appreciate um, that confirmation. Thank you. Good. Um, yes, Council McGowan. Yeah, Michael, I, I don't know if you know the answer to this because um, it may be more a question for the, <coughs> the economic development consultant. But one question I had, I was interested that 10% of the students said they saw parking problems uh, in town. I know there were about 19%. I know that undergraduates aren't allowed to have cars. So I, I was just a little curious about that. I know there are 19% graduate students. And so maybe half of the graduate students see parking problems in town. But I was curious if I, really the question is, do we have the ability to correlate between what kind of student it was and what their answer was on that question. I agree, David, that caught my eye in the in the information. It, it led me to think when it says among the 10% that drive, it's, are they, is it saying that they have driver's licenses or that they have cars with them at Princeton? Because if that's the case, some of this information could be a little skewed. So I'll jump in uh, with a partial answer to that. Keep in mind that this survey also includes graduate students who live off campus and it includes respondents from the theological seminary. So okay. those would be people who might not live within walking distance and who would drive to downtown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think the answer to the other question is, I believe we could find out which kinds of students expressed parking as an issue, but I will ask that. I don't see any reason we shouldn't be able to get that. Great. I, I think there was a question asking for, uh, your status, either as an undergrad or graduate or a senior yes. versus so yeah. that should be- There had to be because out. that information <laughs> yeah. was provided. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, engagement Hub, uh, we've made a, we've restored a library page so we can put links uh, to the documents on there. Uh, and um, the events have been updated to reflect the upcoming events and the time frame. Um, there's no other questions in that section. Uh, we should move on to the visioning survey survey update. Justin, um, do, do I have screen share capabilities as well? Yes, you do. Okay, great. Just a moment then. And I know she's not here today, but uh, thank you to Liliana for filming a video for us to put yes. on the website in English and Spanish. Uh, I thought that was wonderful. Okay, one second. There we go. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna, we'll just start uh, with uh, an overview and keep in mind that the survey just closed on, um, we actually closed it late Monday night, just in case people didn't get around to their emails on <laughs> Sunday, sometimes over the weekend. So we, we gave it a little bit of a lag from the official closing date, uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, we did have uh, around 900 uh, total uh, participants. And I want to point out that unlike the economic survey, which uh, requires uh, statistical significance for purposes of economic projections, this is a visioning survey. It's much more about uh, understanding key issues and priorities and, and kind of getting the pulse of the community. Uh, in the old days, uh, in the old days before COVID, it wasn't that long ago, was it? But uh, I would say the first half of my career, we would do this kind of exercise during a series of kickoff meetings. We might have like eight of them, and we might see if we were lucky at eight meetings, something like 300 total people. I mean, good turnout. So I know that 900 may not seem a lot when you compare it to the economic survey, but the economic survey functions in an entirely different way. So I just want to just give a little context to it. I'm going to have Liz, who's on here. Um, are you still here, Liz? I am, yes. Okay, great. I'm gonna have Liz take you through kind of the, the 
current uh, survey analysis, and we are still working on the open end responses. There are hundreds of them that we need to uh, read and tag, and we'll be doing that you know, over the next uh, several weeks. But Liz will give you a flavor of what we've learned from the survey, and then um, we'll go back to you, Michael, and uh, you can let us know at what point you want to talk about the open house, because um, sure. we also have some slides on that. All right, I'm going to turn it over to you, Liz. I can, uh, would you like remote control access for me? You can request it. Here, I'm okay. going to give it to you, actually. You now have control of slide advance. Uh, hmm. You need to just put your cursor in it. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I'm clicking. Oh, okay, there it goes. Okay. Yep. Oh, too much. Over quick. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Sorry, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a little bit of what Susan repeated that the survey was almost open for two months and you know, four shy from that round 900 um, responses. And you know, the, the municipality really took the lead in, in promoting the survey through their social media, attending a ton of events and using their networks. So um, almost 90% live of the participants live in Princeton, um, and so 16% of those also work here. Um, we found this kind of interesting that there's pretty much an even distribution of participants who have lived in Princeton for various lengths of time. And you know we we haven't compared this to the census any of this to the census data to see if that's you know representative yet. Um, but it, it seems like you know you've got some some newer people and some some longer people who took the survey. Okay. And then um, we asked people to identify where they lived on this map. Um, and if you can see, it's sort of uh, area six had the highest number at twenty one percent, followed by I think it was area five. Um, so that sort of core area had the most responses, but there there were responses from all over the town. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, so the race and ethnicity question, um, you know, seventy three percent identified as white or Caucasian. Um, you know, fourteen percent preferred not to answer. There, you know. Asian, 7%, uh, Hispanic, Latino, 5%, multiracial, and Black were both 2%. Um, you know, we'll also compare this to the, the census data, but I think we had the, the at first glance, it seems maybe that the, the Asian and the Black and African American populations were slightly underrepresented, but I think um, Hispanic, Latino is about 6%. So I think they did a good job of, of getting to that population. Um, about half were identified as um, women, uh, a third men, and then, you know, there was a chunk that preferred not to answer. Uh, for the age question, we it's a, a pretty nice bell curve of respondents, um, trended a tiny bit high, uh, higher age from 55 to 64. But we did get some responses in that younger 25 to 34, as well as that, you know, the 75 to 84 age. So it's, it's a pretty good age distribution. Um, so for income, um, higher income people represented about 33%. This also, um, almost a third of people preferred not to answer this question as well. We made um, the demographic information sort of optional. Um, but you can kind of see that scale as it, it, it trends down as, as, as the income is lower. Um, about 75%, three quarters of people live in a single family home. And then it's, you know, a good mix of um, multifamily, townhouse, two family. Um, a few people lived in uh, ADUs as well. Um, so, you know, this was the question where we had asked people to rank the top five um, uh, what issues or things that they liked about living, working, and visiting Princeton. <clears throat> so this is the weighted score. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, when we do the full analysis, we'll be able to see, you know, what was number, the first choice which this versus the second. 
second in choice, but um, ability to walk to destinations, the variety of shops and restaurants in the downtown, access to the Princeton University, the public school system, and then um, the natural features and tree canopy rose to the top. And then some of the challenges um, were high cost of living, traffic congestion, availability of retail and services, some of the new construction development, and as well as the income wealth gap among residents. Okay, and then we had also asked, this was selecting the top three, so it's represented by um, percentage of the uh, overall issues and trends that the master plan effort must address. Um, uh, the bike ped safety really uh, was number one, um, followed by, you know, preserving existing forest and woodland and protecting the environmental quality and natural resources. So the, those environmental sustainability issues. And then we also had a follow-up question um, asking people to identify um, issues and trends related to development and redevelopment that the master plan must address. Um, number one was ensuring a healthy, thriving downtown. Um, two is expanding that middle income housing options, which, you know, is, you know, for people that do not qualify for affordable housing, but can't afford to live in town, and then ensuring that new development blends well. And then we asked what, um, what people think about the impacts of new construction and development. Um, and, you know, traffic parking congestion was number one, followed by maintaining neighborhood character as well as housing affordability. Okay. And then we also asked um, how important it was to, to create the following types of housing in Princeton. And this was also, it was a, a matrix question. So we just took the top, the most important and somewhat important, um, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at what they felt was the least important, um, but you can see it's ranked from the top to the below, the bottom that you know, single family homes on smaller lots was seen as most important. And then, you know, the larger multifamily buildings with over 10 units was seen, was seen as, you know, not as important to be, to be building. Oh, sorry, Liz. Um, so the top three modes that people use to get around uh, was the uh, car, automobile, followed by walking and bicycling. And, you know, people really perceived that the streets were, you know, they ranked them very safe for motorists and transit users, but they were seen as very unsafe for not motorized modes so for people walking and biking. Um, and the follow-up to that was, if all the modes were equally safe and convenient, how would it change your travel behavior? And um, that orange bar, which is not labeled on this presentation, um, was bicycling. Um, so bicycling, walking, people, half the people said they would do more. And the green and the blue, I believe, are um, the local shuttle bus and New Jersey Transit, they would take more. Um, and then you can see if they had all those other options, people would be driving less. Um, this was pretty you know, equal that we asked a question about the um, existing historic preservation efforts. You know, about a third of people were not familiar, and then it was sort of split between that we don't do enough, it's very balanced, and then, you know, perhaps a little bit too restrictive. Um, public amenities and features that people like to see more of in the downtown, um, more areas for outdoor dining, more street trees, and then some small parks and plazas. Um, and then the park recreation amenities that are most important. Um, trails and multi-use paths were very clearly high, highest at 84% of people responded that that was important, followed by picnic areas and, and dog parks. Um, this was one that had a lot of open-ended as well. So we're going to have to, you know, I think there were some really good ideas in, in that question. So coming soon. <laughs> oh. And that, yeah, that's that's it. You know, there there there's a couple more questions um, we had asked people. Think you know what their their biggest hopes for Princeton in the future are. Um, so that's going to take a little bit of time to to read through. Um, and I think that we're going to get a lot of really good insight from that one. But we 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 didn't feel like we could present anything on that today yet. We haven't been able to go through it all and tag it. So there's more detail uh, coming. Um, 
as we are able to analyze the open-ended pieces of this. But I think at a high level, there are already some interesting uh, findings that hopefully uh, I know that we've been talking to uh, Michael and Elaine about um, as they uh, think through uh, some of the content uh, for the open house. So I don't know, Mike, we could send it back to you unless there are some, any, any questions about what we learned so far. Yeah, hi, David. Hi. Yeah, I, I think the thing that jumped out at me was that question about what types of housing we need to create more of. And um, the idea that we should be creating more single family housing, I think needs some um, um, delving into what that means. Um, because, you know, we're pretty built out in terms of our residential zones. Um, and I'm pretty sure from what I hear from people in the community, they're not saying we need to tear down a bunch of our existing single family homes and build new ones. So I would like to know more about that. Yeah. I don't know if there's any way to get it from the survey, right. but I think it's something to focus on in the community meetings. To see. Yeah, that's a, it's a great point. The, that was specifically uh, like smaller single family homes on small lots. So sort of more of a maybe cottage style uh, development concept. And I think that is something that you're right, needs to be unpacked a little bit more. It's also something that uh, based on uh, what we hear uh, at the open house, but also in some of the open-ended responses we haven't looked at yet, that um, you know we might wanna work with you all to follow up on that more in the second survey to, you know, what is that, what does that look like? Is there a version of that that you all think is viable and makes sense? Um, so yeah, that's just a starting point. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Louise. Just an, another word on that. I mean, I think it's a great thing to flag. And, um, you know, when we talk about how important the missing middle um, is to address, we so often talk in terms of multifamily housing and, um, you know, fairly uh, large um, groups of dwellings in, you know, like the new. Um, projects going in near the uh, shopping center. Um, and I do think that, uh, well, I have seen, and I don't know whether how valid this is, but what I've seen research findings that show that younger families, you know, first time home buyers are looking for uh, detached single family homes, but small ones. <laughs> small ones with just a little backyard, you know, on, on a small lot. And <clears throat> so when I, I look at that, that's what I think of. Um, but, I, but it is really important to understand what, what other folks think of too, or, or be clear about what we mean uh, when we uh, throw that out there. There aren't very many parcels left in a, an area of town that you'd think is suitable for development that would lend itself, uh, lend themselves to, to that kind of treatment to basically create a neighborhood that has the kind of density and housing scale that we see all in the, uh, in most of the Jackson neighborhood. Uh, and Liz or Susan, was that question one of the ranked ones or was that just pick, pick one? It was a matrix question. So um, it was from most important to like not important. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so those were the ones we looked at just the most important um, to create. So yeah, I think looking at the back half of that as well is just as important to, to get a yeah. full picture of what yep. people thought was, you know, so maybe, you know, maybe 40% of people thought that was not important at all, right? So there's definitely more analysis of that question that we need to look at. Got it, thank you. Sam? Yeah, I'd just like to respond to the comments from David and Louise about um, the challenges of building 
single family homes and small lots in a built out town. I would point out that the, the town is, is very much not built out. And in fact, there are many, many sites where uh, smaller homes could be built on small lots. And in fact, there have been two proposals for such developments, which have been before the planning board this year, which you are no doubt familiar with. I'm speaking about the townhouse applications on Linden Lane and on Humbert Street. And in both of those cases, those were applications where existing properties were demolished and replaced with single family homes on smaller lots. And for one reason or another, which David and Louise are, are very familiar with, those applications were, have not been successful. And, you know, it strikes me that the, the message which is coming through from the survey respondents is that we need to uh, change zoning to make those kinds of applications possible. But Sam, I just want to point out, both of those were townhouse developments, which was another category, which was not nearly as highly ranked as single family houses on small lots. So to the extent that we're trying to be responsive to what we hear from people, those two projects would not have been. Can I make a return to Rose Wood's so I think I think that <laughs> I, 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 and I would just say I and I, I I take your point, Sam. I when I think of those projects, I don't think of them as um, single family owned small lots. I think of them as multi you know small scale multifamily or townhouse uh, on small lot, which is you know maybe a distinction without a difference. And we're but a completely understand what you mean about being able to consider rezoning in ways that, um, you know, accommodate that, that kind of thing, not necessarily those projects in particular, <laughs> uh, for reasons we don't need to go into, but, but I, I see what you're saying. Maybe it's, maybe it's something that can be explored in the open house. I mean, the U.S. Census does not, as far as I know, does not um, distinguish between a townhouse and a single family home. And I, I think it's unclear. Uh, yeah what the respondents perhaps meant whenever they were answering that. But uh, I mean, I, I would certainly not consider those to be multifamily dwellings because it, 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 it had its own access and its own yard and its own well, whatever. I think it's something which should be explored more. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy you said that, Sam, because uh, actually one of the things that Michael mentioned earlier that I'm working with their uh, office is to map out where we have, uh, you know, just single family, parcel versus two, three, four uh, versus five or above and other uses in a way that we don't really have any sort of accurate big picture view in Princeton right now. Uh, people might not even notice that, you know, there's a duplex next door or a triplex or even five units uh, in, in some areas. Yeah, and, and just to piggyback on that, the reason that we're spending uh, the time to do that is because you need to know where you are before you can know where you're going to go. And so that information on existing land use, um, which we're distilling from uh, most like, mostly the tax information, but we're trying to break it down into uh, classifications that are useful to us, you know, singles, two family, and then higher. Um, but that information should be able to inform those decisions that you're talking about of where there may be a capacity or an ability in a context that could accept a solution such as what you're talking about, whether that's small lot singles or whether they are semi-detached or um, smaller multifamily. And then, then the, st the statute, the municipal land use law defines multifamily housing as three or more units. Um, the tax office doesn't do, do, do it that way. There are lots of classifications, and um, but at least we'll have that base information so that when we think about this, um, we'll be able to have a, a context for that gives us a, a, an existing intensity of development or where this may be compatible and we may have the capacity to do that. And, and just following up on that, one of the other things that um, was fairly high in that same response were multifamily with 10 or fewer units. So smaller scale, 
multifamily. So there's a bit of use and scale that are combined in, in that question. And I do think that one of the challenges is going to be to sort of unpack that more. Um, and I think, um, I think that, uh, you know, we're all going to be up to that task. I hope this presentation can be posted on the engagement hub along with the, the initial findings from the economic slash consumer survey. Yeah, that if you want them to. I mean, yes, I, we do. I think that it makes sense. Yeah, we can. Um, uh, we have some other slides that are really for the meeting today that are combined here, but we can remove those and retitle this and we're happy to share it. Great. Yeah, when you retitle when you retitle it, I'm sorry, I'm I'm talking too much and I, I'll <laughs> I'll stop hmm. soon. I'll stop soon. Um when you retitle it, could you replace TAC, which I assume means technical advisory committee, although that's not what we call ourselves. Your steering <laughs> Could committee. You, yeah. you replace that with a uh, master yeah. plan committee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to just retitle it, you know, preliminary visioning survey results and just a date um, so that it's clear that that's all that's in that um, file in any case. But yes, thank you for pointing that out. I do know it's a steering committee, but sometimes we have tax and SACs in the same town and it's can get very confusing for us. So apologies for that. We'll fix it. Yes, Alvin. Hi. Um, did you also want to want to include the open ended questions? And would you want to wait and get this so you have the answers to the open ended questions then and then post everything? And if so, how long is it going to be before you are able to analyze those. It, it's going to take some time. We we literally have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses, and uh, quite frankly, more open ended type questions than we may have initially envisioned um, to satisfy all the feedback uh, that we got on the survey. So, um, I know that you know we'll certainly have it done by the middle of December, but it it it's not a small task. I, I wish I could tell you it was, um, but uh, that is our time frame uh, to complete, uh, kind of round out the survey analysis would be uh, the middle of December. I guess the only thing I'm thinking is, it seems like we're gonna end up with a partial of a partial result. You know, you will have one, one little piece now and then something else will, will come later. So I, I'm, I'm just, again, I'm, I'm wondering whether it's really up to yeah it's a great question i mean we could post this now as preliminary and then we could replace it i uh, but we're open to your guidance here great great point alvin david your hand is up i can't see if anyone else has their hand up right now yeah i just wanted to respond to alvin that i think there are two benefits to doing it sooner rather than later and one is it sort of rewards people who did participate in the survey, who I'm sure are very curious to see, you know, whatever they can find out about how other people responded. And secondly, I think that um, it may whet people's appetite for further participation. You know, there may be people who read this and say, oh, you know, I really disagree with this. And boy, I need to show up at the, at the, uh, public engagement meeting to sort of set things straight or whatever. But I think there, there are good uh, outcomes from um, making even these preliminary findings um, public. Then I guess my, my only other request would be then make sure you say this, there's more to come. You know, this is, this is just the initial, the initial initial and there's, and there's more to come. And so your questions may be answered with, 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 with some follow-up. We can, uh, if, is that the consensus that we should provide this? Uh, Sam, I see your hand is raised. It's about something else, but I don't want to hog all the time. I mean, if you're, if anyone else has a question, then I can go ahead. 
I it totally, to just say, since you're asking, I totally agree with what Alvin just said that, you know, just to add a slide that lets people know there's, there's more to yeah. come. I think we might even just put it on the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's super clear, um, you know, preliminary results, more detailed analysis, you know, um, whatever. I will, say, I will say also that if everybody has agreed that it gets posted now, I do think it can be used to promote the open house that, you know, this just skims the surface and we'll be talking about some of these issues in more detail come to the open house. Okay, can I, can I ask you another question about something else? Nope. Yeah? Yes. Yep. Uh, so I, I just wanted to ask Susan, uh, based on the um, demographic responses, it struck me that perhaps there were some groups, uh, I'm thinking in particular, uh, lower income groups, um, African American people, and Asian residents who perhaps were underrepresented in the survey mm -hmm. responses. Uh, I was just going to ask if there were uh, any particular strategy to try to perform further outreach to those groups to mm -hmm. try to utilize the, the responses. Um. Certainly, you know, the reason we did the EJ analysis uh, early on was to be able to keep an eye on that. Um, we haven't looked at the exact figures yet for representation and how we did, but we will. Um, and I think what we're going to learn from that is that the next round of, of pop-ups and, you know, Justin did a great job going to many events. Uh, we may want to, you know, focus more um, with those populations in mind. So one of the things that I wanted to mention in the beginning, which I, I didn't, um, so thanks for an opportunity that to fire, you know, what's left of my synapses, um, is that the outreach is the totality of everything. So in other words, you know, there are different strategies and different opportunities that are offered at different points in time. Um, and um, what we want to do is continue to have varied options. So for instance, one thing that I can imagine and that we, we can talk about after the open house um, is, you know, at what point uh, is going back out into the community doing pop-ups or intercepts, you know, important? And what information would we wanna, you know, present? And um, there, there's a whole conversation that we could, could have about that. But I think that in response to your question, you know, focusing, um, some effort uh, on those populations is is important. I agree with that. Yeah, and I'll make a plea to the steering committee members once again too to please let me know um, of any events, you know, no matter how big or how small, where I could go. If you could connect me, if you want to come alongside with me um, to try to reach, you know, any and every group. I know there were discussions early on about, you know, to to reach this population, go to a mahjong game not to, you know, whatever you read in the paper um, and any follow through on those events would be, uh, you know, wonderful. Uh, I know uh, Alvin and Councilman uh, Newland and Ms. Satterfield helped set up a Witherspoon Jackson meeting uh, and that ended up working out well. And we saw a bump almost immediately after that uh, in the amount of surveys. So if we kind of follow that template, um, I just got to know where to go. Yeah, so and the I other- I just want to add something quick to that. Not only was it the Witherspoon Jackson meeting, before the meeting, there were flyers that were printed and actually walked through the whole neighborhood, leaving flyers indoors you know, or on porches that to, to let people know that there was going to be this community meeting and that the subject of the meeting was going to be the visioning of the master plan. And our last meeting was at the um, Arts Council, and that's where we're usually having the meetings. And uh, you put your name on the list when you come in. And once you put your name on the list, we send out the notices to those people to let you know about the next meetings. Yeah, so if you think about it, the people, you know, in that neighborhood and within that group, they got notified 
in paper. Then uh, we talked there, had a Q&A. Then there was some follow-up because they left their emails. Um, and I know there was follow-up even weeks later when we extended it. Um, and, and that is just a really successful way of, of reaching people and reminding them. But again, there's so many different uh, groups in Princeton that we need to know more about uh, how best to do that. When we get to the part of the agenda where we're talking <clears throat> about the open house, um, Justin, maybe you can describe uh, the ways that specifically we're working to get um, Spanish speaking and Asian American residents um, there. Absolutely. I can just ask some really specifically, do we know what percentage of the respondents to the visioning survey were uh, university students or, or, or higher education? And secondly, do we know what percentage of the respondents were uh, private owners versus renters? We do, we do have the owners versus renter data. And I wanna say it's like uh, three quarters uh, owners around 25% renters, but uh, we can confirm that as we go through the data. Um, in terms of university, I think students, I mean, we, we'd have to infer looking at students in age because we, we uh, did not ask if they were Princeton University students. Um, in terms of income, because presumably university students' income would be in, you know, kind of the bottom decile. Yes, we got a very, if you look at the um, map by, by physical area, we got very few respondents who live in the area that where the majority of the university is located. So I think what what we can, what was that? I just wanted to also add, yep. we have theological seminary students, yep. we have uh, you know folks who may consider themselves a student at the Institute. So yep. Princeton is not the only right. entity in town that has, and we did have respondents to the uh, student survey uh, from the seminary. So I'm assuming they are attuned to be looking for this information. There is some confusion, of course, between the, the economic survey and the visioning survey, which were happening very, very close together in time, it, it, particularly at, at the university. And I'm, I'm just slightly concerned that university students may be highly underrepresented in the visioning survey. Yeah, to, to your point, Sam, there was no direct outreach to university students either on this survey. Uh, Monday, I'm going to a small class to talk to them. Um, but outside of putting flyers at Small World and the liquor store and, you know, the kiosk uh, over in front of the uh, Fitzrandolph Gate, uh, we didn't cross into the university or, or, you know, have any other sort of direct uh, targeting of, the, of their students. Which could change in the future if this group thinks that's the way to go. Personally, I think it, I think it, I think the university students are a constituent part of the Princeton community and should absolutely be included uh, in a in a representative manner. It, it's hard, uh, Sam. You know, we put out a really concerted effort for the um, concentrated effort for the um, the uh, economic survey. Students, by and large, don't opt into taking the time to fill these out. Um, you know, they're more likely to fill it out if we're offering some sort of you know a cupcake at Bent Spoon or a tea at Jundi. But, uh, you know, Justin and I actually talked about that and we felt that wouldn't be appropriate because there were no other incentives for any other demographic that were offered. So we didn't want to incent one way or the other. So it's, uh, it's a challenge. Points well taken, but I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about the survey responses and like considering which groups might be underrepresented. And, you know, I think it's clear that, that certain groups are at some level underrepresented despite everyone's best efforts. But I fear that, um, that you, you know, whereas there was specific meetings happening during the visioning survey with, with particular groups and certain stakeholders were specifically sought out for, for, for meetings that perhaps, you know, in the, in the next uh, phase, um, there could be, uh, like, I don't know if, if, if the consultants could like set up a kiosk or something on, on, in the university and, and just try to, you know, in, encourage more participation there. That's something we can, we can think about. I, I do think that there were also some 
questions in the uh, student survey that also relate to kind of interests and, uh, you know, in, in the downtown, you know, related to, um, you know, spending opportunities. So there is some information in the economic survey that, you know, we might want to pull out and also consider kind of as part of the uh, picture as well. But we're open to, if that's important, then we'll talk to uh, Justin um, and uh, our consultant team and, uh, you know, figure out what the options are for um, having more, more focused efforts there. I'll go to a party at the eating club if I have to, too. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You know, while we're talking Please. about students, um, I, I would love to see participation among Princeton High School students um, and other high school aged um, kids. I mean, the mm -hmm. young people, <laughs> uh, these are folks with more insight into yeah. Princeton and maybe a higher stake in and what they, you know, would like to see in the future years and decades. So I don't know uh, the right way to do that. Maybe I don't want to put Brian on the spot, but might might be something to, um, you know, to look to how to expand our our outreach and get <clears throat> input from from Princeton High School and other high school students. Yeah, we, we did actually, um, we had a, a lot of success. They were very helpful. Um, some of the members of the, uh, you know, the superintendent's office in, in getting the word out in, uh, I think they have a digital backpack um, along with all their social media for the schools. Um, but I agree with you, Louise. I think if we could target something one-on-one -on -one to the students themselves. Uh, I think that'd be very valuable. Is there a civics club uh, at the high school? or something comparable to that? Uh, I have a high school intern that'll be in in an hour and a half um, <laughs> and I can interrogate him on, on every, everything there. Yeah, there are usually some clubs that have you know, a little bit of a nexus that we've in the past been successful at um, sharing uh, some of the uh, promotional materials with and um, you know, using them as a uh, to network, uh, you know, into the, into the school. So this is something to think about. Definitely. Yeah. And I know groups like the pedestrian and bicycle advisory committee have had some good success, yeah. uh, getting surveys out and information back. So uh, I think the school definitely. Should be uh, there's a group called, um, pulse, a girls group that has been continued since the nineties. There's also MSAN uh, for civic minded students and also if you check with the guidance counselors they can also tell you of um, different programs that the students are in. Great thank you Ms. Satterfield. You're welcome. There's also the uh, Futura students group which is the first generation uh, students and uh, just I can put you in touch with the new coordinator there at the high school. That'd be great thank you. And although she can't be here today, uh, Cecilia Bird is a vice principal at one of the schools. So I'll speak with her offline too. And also check with uh, Dr. Dining. She uh, it works with uh, careers. So if you check with her, she also can give you some names of students. C Cecilia would be great. She's at the high school. We'd love to see them at the open house. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do we want to move on to the open yeah. discussion? Any more questions on the survey or suggestions for future outreach? Okay. I would just note that I think you are going to get some questions about the demographics because I, um, I think they are a bit, a bit different than the town's demographics in a couple mm -hmm. of the key areas. Yep. Um, so. And now, Susan, do you want to go back into your presentation? 
Um, um, I didn't know if, uh, thanks, Justin. Uh, Michael, how did you want to broach this? Do you want to go into our presentation or did you have another thought? I just I just was going to introduce it and then we go into the presentation. And okay, discussion. okay. So, great. I'll, I'll get screen share set, set up while you're doing that. Okay. Um, so uh, we've, uh, the, the open house is on the 30th and we'll be at the library um in the in the meeting room um we've begun to formulate our uh, approach to this and uh, largely it's coming from uh some of the responses we've gotten from the survey that i've identified some of the larger issues but um we're really hoping that um we can drive participation uh strong participation for the uh for the open house we've provided um uh the graphic and the flyer information. Uh, it's on the engagement hub. Uh, it's been provided to uh, Justin's office so that that could be uh, uh, provided through the municipal outlet and uh, social media uh, channels. And um, uh, in terms of uh, measuring success, participation is one measure of success, but the other is uh, we were trying to drill down on some of these issues. And some of them we've just been focusing on. We're talking about housing, we're talking about mobility um, and open space and things, these general themes that we're seeing, we want to find out more about what's happening there. So, um, so here we go, here's the first slide. So Susan, um, we've got, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a sign-in station um near the entrance of, entrance of the room that would be staffed by uh either Princeton Princeton uh municipality uh representative or a uh, steering committee representative um we're going to have a handout and that handout would be an overview of the master plan and the open house uh Spanish on one side English on the other side um and then we'd have key stations based on our um survey results in order to start asking questions and getting folks to provide input uh, with these. Um, these include housing, which we just talked about, uh, the downtown uh, economic development issues, parks and open space and community mobility. That's what we're seeing as the overall themes. Um, uh, we will have boards which identify existing conditions. So I talked a little bit about the existing land use and existing zoning. Um, and then uh, some of the trends that we've seen from the survey, uh, maybe some from the, uh, from the uh, census, but, uh, and then a prompt for activity. Um, we, we're considering this as an interactive, but not a digitally interactive. This is an interactive, um input situation where we're able to get folks to identify spatially uh, locations and characterize these things uh on the maps such that we can start to identify uh what folks are telling us uh from a and and to buttress the uh, or refine the information we got from the first survey So I did do a just a, a real kind of basic mock-up, but generally what we like to do is have the sign-in station kind of right at the door. It's pretty much like in the hall. <laughs> um, so we get everybody on the way in and we set it up. So there's information about the master plan right when you walk in, but that it's set up so people can funnel either direction. So we don't have too many crowds. Uh, and then we'd like to have some tables and chairs in the middle for people who want to think, reflect, maybe write uh, longer comments. Um, but then this, it'll be by topic, the stations, um, so people can flow in and move around at their own pace, uh, look at the information, think about it, ask questions. Um, I know that uh, Elaine and Michael are working on, on prompts uh, for each of the stations, um, but this is sort of the general uh concept um i'll be there there'll be me plus two people from my staff including uh one bilingual uh staff member um i know that there'll be a couple of people from michael's office um, um and that we would be stationed at the uh, i'll call them sort of the content areas um and uh, that is kind of the the general concept 
-hmm. And it's come any time between uh, 4, 4 p.m. and I'm trying to remember the end point. Seven. 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 We're not going to kick people out right at seven, obviously, but um, but it gives uh, an opportunity for people to come uh, after picking up, uh, you know, children from school, um, as well as uh, at the end of the workday. So we're trying to capture a different time than uh, a typical uh, meetings that we used to do from seven to nine, which made it very hard for certain people to uh, attend. Can you talk about the media and the spokesperson? Sure, whenever you're ready. Um, so I'll jump in here, I guess. So that's the basic concept and layout. Uh, I don't know if there needs to be more conversation about any of the logistics, Justin. Um, I haven't checked, but I do know that in during past steering committee meetings, my friend Rich Ryan has sat through every single one of them, and I'm guessing he's probably here today. Uh, and he's likely, among other media people, to be at this open house. So I want to be sure that he has somebody uh, enthusiastic and knowledgeable to speak with. I imagine that's going to be Justin, but I wanted to make sure everybody was clear on that. If we get questions from media, that there is somebody they can speak with. Uh, I'd be happy to take on that role. Okay, great. Um, and Rich, if you're here, hi. Um, I think the next thing that I wanted to talk about, Justin sent me a list of the organizations that he's been reaching out to, to publicize this open house. Um, I think what we've learned in the past from participation in the surveys is there is no such thing as too much communication about something like this. So <clears throat> in particular for communities we think might be harder to reach or harder to pers persuade to attend, I think we should absolutely not be shy about reaching out to them early and often um, and doing whatever we can to encourage their participation, which leads I, me to, go ahead. Uh, I see Louise has her hand up and- I'm sorry, uh, I cannot see anybody's hand. And, and somebody did even before uh, Louise did, Kristen okay. did, I believe. Okay. So I, I see Louise now. Um, I just wanted to, make clear that as far as I'm concerned, um, I assume that any member of the steering committee who is you know, approached by um, somebody in the media feels free to talk about our work from your perspective. I totally agree that Justin is the point person and should be the main uh, information source and, and that kind of thing, but I just wanted to, make sure that nobody felt like that meant that no one else, you know, could could speak if you're so inclined. I, maybe that goes without saying, I just wanted to be explicit about it. Okay, so noted. Um, Alvin? Um, maybe you're gonna get to this. I, I, I guess I have a couple of questions as far as notifying the meeting, are you going to put out lawn signs again to to and you can put those in, if you will, different neighborhoods. <clears throat> but but I guess my larger question again is with is with the layout. And again, you may you may be coming to this. I see you know community mobility, parks, open space. Um, are there going to be representatives of some? organization that's at each each one of these stations that will say take notes on on comments that people are making um how are you going to handle the fact that you know it may start at four and someone may come at at five o'clock are, are they going to know or is there going to be an overview a, a repeating of the overview if someone say goes to downtown economic development and, and they participate there, what happens if they want to come back to community mobility? Um, are, are you going to somehow repeat what is going on there to, to get their comments? If you so I, understand, if you're understanding what I'm saying. Yeah, I, no, I, no, no, I do. And there are not individual presentations. So there are exhibits 
and prompts and there are people from uh, Clark Caton Hintz's office and our office there to walk people through, but there are various ways that they can comment on the information that's there. In addition to the comment area, if they want to write longer comments on anything, and they don't have to go in any particular order. So they can go first to housing, spend as much time there as they want, then go to parks and open space. What happens over the course of the night is that you'll see that the maps will get marked up. Um, and so, um, um, you know, that, that, that can be very interesting. Um, so if people want to funnel around so that they get a sense of, of that, they're certainly more than welcome to. But the overview is uh, a series of boards that they can look at. It'll explain what the master plan is. You know, people will spend as much time there as they think they need to spend. So it's not as if they're like many meetings and many presentations going on. Um, just to be clear. So that's what makes it an open house that basically people can flow through at their own pace, go to things in whatever order they want to um, and contribute uh, you know, based on looking at the existing ex conditions information that's there, looking at any of the trends and highlights that I know CCH is working hard to look at uh, census data, to look at uh, both of the surveys uh, the consumer survey and the visioning survey. Um, they may be looking at um, some of the prior plans. I know they've put that information together. So there's going to be some, some information, some context, if you will, for the existing conditions. And then at each station, uh, a prompt uh, to get them to uh, respond to and interact. So it's, it's, I don't know, Elaine, if you guys want to give an example to make it a little bit more clear. Um, do you mind going back one slide? Since right. Not at all. Since you have the power? I do um, have the power. So you'll see this middle part here where it says key area stations. And then below that, in each station will be information boards. Here's where we are now with uh, open space. Let me pick one that wasn't really controversial. Here's a map of all of Princeton's open space recreation facilities and opportunities. Here's what we heard from the survey, which is a lot of the open-ended responses. Um, I, just, I just called that up, hang on one second. So for example, um, so there were people who said, gosh, I would love to use these facilities more, but it's really hard for me to get to some of them without a car. So fine, here's a list of the things we've heard. <clears throat> now tell us how we can solve that problem for you either put a sticker on the map that says, I would like transportation to here, or there's not enough parking here. Or one of the things we heard, for example, from women was, I don't feel safe on some of these trails alone. Mark those places for us, things like that. So there'd be opportunities for feedback on the map to tell us specifically where things need to be addressed. In addition, there will be comment cards or comment sheets where people can write out more general, longer form comments and provide them at each station if they're topic specific or generally. But it will all be based on the boards of information that will be available at each station. What do so, you mean when you, when the, do you say prompt? I, I, what does that term mean? It'll be questions. So for example, at the open space station, there'll be a question <clears throat> that might say, how can we make it easier for you to take advantage of the open space opportunities if you don't drive? And they'll be able to put post-its or answer the question on a sheet or whatever. So we'll have, and we haven't refined these questions yet since we're still looking at the open-ended responses. You know, please mark on the map where you think changes or upgrades are needed for the open space facilities in, in the town. What can Princeton do to enhance usage of open space facilities? So basically questions that will prompt people to say how they think things can be made better. Uh, I think David was next, I'm sorry, yep. wasn't watching. Yeah. Thanks. And I apologize if I missed this because I've been up and down a little with my granddaughter, but uh, on the agenda, it talked about um, there were headings for the steering committee and for mayor and council 
uh, our roles at the open house. And if that was covered, I missed it. If it wasn't covered, I'm curious uh, uh, yeah. what you're thinking of in that regard. It was not covered. Um, we were getting to that next, actually. The first thing I wanted to say is that I think it's really important that as many of the steering committee and the public officials in the town as possible can show up at this open house. That lends an atmosphere of importance to residents who show up. Um, it's, it's important that this is not viewed as here are the consultants doing a master plan. It's, you know, here are the folks uh, who are whose master plan this is, and it's the folks from the community, the community leaders or the leaders on this committee. Yeah, this is really your master house and I mean, your open house, and we are providing all the materials and in, in plan. <clears throat> So, but are you looking for us to participate as members of the public or to be at certain stations that we're interested in and engaging with the public on the issues or what? So yes, yes and yes. Um, we absolutely would love to have the sign-in table staffed by either a public official or steering committee members. You are the welcoming face. Um, they don't know us, they know you. Right. So it would be great for them to see you first. Um, to I, do, we don't see the individual stations as a place to convey a lot of information to people as much as it is to collect information and feedback from people. So if there are questions that you all can answer and you're there, that's great. Um, but it's a chance for them to talk to us. Yep. And I think that, you know, the one thing that is really important and that you all of you could say many times that evening is don't remember, you know, please don't forget to put that down as a comment yeah. um, so that, um, you know, we are capturing everything. I mean, we will also take some notes as we are talking to people to the extent that we can. Um, we're not going to miss anything, but the more that we can encourage people to also um, use the comment cards, um, uh, the better uh, the output will be from the meeting, I think. Sorry, Elaine, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, not at all. Uh, John, I think John was next. Yeah, I just wanted to call the steering committee's attention, and perhaps it's already been called to your attention, Page 13 of the town topics this week under the caption Princeton Future reads as follows. It's full page. It reads Princeton Future invites all Princeton residents to an open public meeting, colon, circulation and mobility. Speak up, have your say. The November 12 event is one in a series of unofficial listening sessions sponsored by Princeton Future to inform and engage residents as the town prepares its new community master plan. It is intended to complement the official master planning process by the Princeton Planning Board. Uh, this certainly speaks to the issue of steering committee members being there, but it obviously speaks to other issues which are perhaps complicating, confusing, unless this, of course, and I'm not aware, Louise, is this under our auspice, auspices? It, have we encouraged this or is this Princeton? I, I see Alvin shaking his head. It, it's not under the auspices. Um, and and I invite Justin to weigh in too. It's not a municipal event. It's not under the auspices of, of um, you know, the planning office or, or anything, but there's certainly um, a steering committee me members should feel free to go. <clears throat> I cannot, <laughs> as I am still testing positive for COVID, but, uh, but it is a listening session. I, I noted you use the phrase open public meeting. It, it's not a meeting that's covered by the Open Public Meetings Act, not to go into the weeds on legality, but, um, I mean, it's not, it's not a, uh, yeah, I, I think I've, you know, said what I know and need to say. Justin, do you have anything to add? Sure. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, even though you're a member of this this steering committee, feel free to go to a, a meeting of that group or any other group. Um, the flip side of that, though, is if you're a member of the public and you go to that group and you have this wonderful idea and then it doesn't get into the master plan, well, you know, that's not part of uh, the master plan. Um, you know, so that that kind of uh, flow of ideas it isn't the same. Um, Emma Brigade, uh, she couldn't be here today, but she's a member of Princeton Future and she's on this uh, steering committee. So we certainly respect what they do. Um, but like I said, it, it's it's not the same as what we're doing. Uh, we're happy to welcome each and every one of those members to our open house or, or uh, into our surveys. Um, but just, you know, again, uh, that's not the same as what we've been talking about and uh, won't directly influence the master plan the way that this open house and these surveys will. Justin, do you anticipate in any way appropriately um, touching base to see what the results of this listening session might be and if there's any useful added value input for our purposes? It sounds serious or professional or conscientious the way in which it's written. The reader will take it as such in any event. Yeah, I think, Louisa, it, I think I, it's all of those things. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I understand that the, that the uh, outcome, you know, the whatever work product comes out of this is, is uh, you know, will be shared uh, with, the, with us. And I, I don't think that anything I'm saying is contradicting what Justin said at all. I, uh, I don't mean to, he's absolutely right that it is not, you know, part of the process, but I think, you know, I think what, um, what gets said there, I don't, I don't mean to, in, you know, suggest that what gets said at that session is somehow invalid, um, uh, you know, at all. So I, I think that it is serious. I'm sure it will be professionally run uh, and I'll be interested to see what, what is uh, shared at that meeting. Uh, and Louise and I attended their first meeting when they were doing this uh, about a year ago. Um, we've welcomed the members of that group and just members of the public uh, into the process uh, that we're here today for. And, you know, we'll welcome something if they want to uh, incorporate it as a group. Um, now, we're not going to take their final product and you know, put that directly into the master plan without knowing how they got there, or um, you know, who they reached out to, who was involved, that type of thing. Uh, we're doing what the way that we're handling this for a reason, and that's to you know, really represent all thirty-one thousand people in Princeton um, with a, a clear and, and open mind. Um, you know, and other groups, maybe this one, maybe another one, uh, might not necessarily have that. And you know we have to weigh that uh, when we're getting these submissions. Um, let me jump in and uh, Jack, tell me if I'm asking the question you're trying to ask. Are you asking whether you, we have the impression that this event might um, draw people away from our open house as, as well, they've already done it by the time they go to this November 12th event? It would seem on the surface that such a full public announcement done in advance of ours could confuse those who might wish to participate in both functions. So it's confusing. And secondly, for anyone who's conscientious, it raises the question, who's involved in the master planning process? What is the relationship here? It's just, an, I, that's not an editorial question or a competitive question, but what's going on? And thirdly, it raises the suggestion that if things are done well, or things are done in, a, in an open house kind of way to be simplistic, there may well be, and I think Louise confirms that, value in at least understanding what the results are. I'm guessing that there will be some of the same people interested in our open house as read this advertisement and choose to participate. So again, am I raising a question or questions or 
an observation for comment. I'll, I'll leave that to you to decide. And if I could address that, um, one of the things that I kept hearing earlier in our process from uh, a lot of members of the public were, hey, I couldn't make your meeting Saturday. Why are you only doing your meetings on Saturday mornings? I have to take my kids to soccer. Um, and, and I think they were confused and probably because of the way, uh, you know, articles like that were written. Um, I have read through some of Princeton Future's other meetings, and it seems like they are to some extent differentiating once they're there. Um, you know, uh, either Emma is saying things, uh, Rich Ryan or, or others are, are making it clear that that's not, uh, you know, the municipal process. Um, so I hope that's clear. But, you know, if a group is trying to confuse, um, there's not much we could do other than, you know, direct people to our process. Yeah. And, and just, you know, to be completely frank, um, that group applied to do this process and, you know, we chose Clark Gain hints. Kristen, I'm sorry, Jack, did that answer your question? It did, thank you very much. Kristen. Well, Kristen's gone, Tim. Yeah, I would just further to, uh, to my colleague, Mr. Taylor, that I, you know, I've been on the planning, next year will be 10 years for me on the planning board. And um, there's a, there, throughout that time, there's been a, uh, there's been a muddying of the waters about who's responsible for what uh, in the public. And uh, it, I think that the board and the master plan subcommittee made a good faith effort to emphasize to the public that ours is the ultimate process and that we respect the work that's done by Prince and Future, and um, it is uh, it, it it is duplicative in that if you're very much interested in the actual master plan and you're act and you're very interested in what they're talking about, that you will have to go to both meetings. Um, I also wondered whether you were asking whether we would do a full page ad in town topics, inviting people to um, to the open house. And uh, I don't know the answer to that. I think we've, we had a full page ad encouraging people to fill out our survey, but the point's well taken. I just wanted to add some historical context there that um, people have long been confused by the the sort of relationship between the planning board at Princeton Future, which officially there is not a relationship. We're an appointed board appointed by the municipality and they're a separate uh, nonprofit organization studying the same questions that we are. Yeah, well taken. And I, I could address that outreach. Too. I could address the outreach that we're going to do uh, after we get through all the questions too. Mm -hmm. Great. Kristen. Thanks. So um, there's been reference to boards with questions and content. And in our notes, there's mention of handouts with baseline information. Who's review? I assume CCH has created those. Who Who's not, they have not been created yet. Right. So, so my question is process. Well, who will review the content? Because I can tell you the way you ask a question can lead to certain responses. So will, will we as steering committee members see that material before it gets printed? Is there another group that's reviewing that before it, it gets printed in large format? What, what's the process? Um, we have not. Uh, there, we don't have. We don't have a process whereby any uh, the steering committee will be reviewing the materials prior to. Um, if if that needs to happen, um, we need to know who that is. If it's not Justin, um, as a you know as a professional, um, how that's to work. Uh, we haven't planned on the steering committee reviewing those questions. 
Well, we have a support team, um, Tim, myself, um, Christine Symington, and Alvin McGowan, that uh, reviews uh, agendas and other, you know, materials. Um, uh, I think at a minimum, the support team could um, get a first look at those materials. I don't. Uh, what do you think, Justin? I think we can. Uh, I just. We have 20 and your point is very well taken, Kristen. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I would just like to know from Clark Hanhans when we're getting that information. And then, uh, you know, we have 20 days and we have Thanksgiving in between. So. I didn't, I, I would, I didn't see it. What would Justin repeat that? Uh, when are we going to get this information in the handout? Well, we are still so, still so, working through the. So let's clarify results. that the handout. The handout is just going to be basic information about what is a master plan, et cetera, et cetera. Entirely generic and non-controversial, right. just to ex just to orient people to what this event is intended to do. It'll have a QR code so they can register for updates. Um, you know, general information about uh, the open house itself. Okay. I think so, it sounds like you're more interested in the station content. Yes. I, I just think, I, I mean, the. I have to be honest, I'm not quite sure of the role of this committee at certain points. I'm gonna just say that directly. Um, you know, it, it, I'm just wondering, this, this is a really important meeting for the process. So, um, and this is a, a community that takes these opportunities really seriously and is gonna look really closely at the information presented. So, um, I, you right. know, if I had material with sufficient time to read through, you know, I've, I've done these sort of things with my employer. I'm happy to offer my advice. I don't expect that it will always be taken and accepted, but I can offer my advice. And I think I, I see in the, the the boxes in front of me, a lot of expertise um, from other segments of the community that might be additive. So I'm not trying to make it more difficult. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm taking it very seriously. I think this is a really important milestone for the process. And I just wanna make sure we come out of it with um, having put our best foot forward, having presented material, um, you know, very comprehensively so that we get the feedback that we want. Okay, so so if that's a, if the committee would like us to uh, submit uh, the questions and prompts uh, in advance, uh, it would have to be by next week. Yeah, it would. It would have to be yeah. by next week, and we'd have to have it. Yeah, we can try to put together a draft. Yeah. We have a draft outline that is being refined. Um, and 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 give us deadlines. If we can't respond to you by a deadline, then we've given up our opportunity to provide input. But yeah, um, yeah I. I'm one person. I'm, I'm saying I'm I'm offering to to provide whatever feedback. Yeah, we can we can certainly do that. We had not anticipated that, that there would be that opportunity, but we certainly can. I, I think that's a good idea too. And <clears throat> to your question that you asked before, Elaine, I think it would be good to see what 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 you expect to display at each station. Um, and um, in addition to whatever, you know, handout you're, you're giving or prompts. Okay. And Christine has her hand up. Yeah, I think what uh, Kristen suggested is a really, really good idea. I think it goes back to earlier part of this conversation, you know, when we were talking about the survey results where you know, you're using terminology like single family homes or multiplexes or duplexes. Like, I think that's where the responses you get can be, you know, either influenced by not really understanding what these concepts are. So I think, you know, this group if it can have a look at how CCH is going to, and uh, Susan are gonna frame those types of um, 
the things at each of these stations, you know, we want to feel reassured that the participants are going to understand what it is they're trying to, we're trying to get their feedback on. Yep. Yep. No, this is good. I mean, I think that we had always envisioned this being kind of a collaboration with you all. So exactly. <laughs> this is part of collaborating on this that's really important. And are there any other questions at this time, or do you want me to get into our outreach um, and then save some time for just general question and answer? Why don't you do that? I'll okay. stop commandeering the screen as well. Okay. Sure. Um, I could show mine real quick. Um, I just put together an outreach schedule of what we're looking to do based on what we've learned. Can you see this calendar in yes. front of me? Um, based on what we've learned from the first two surveys and just getting the word out. Uh, Justin, this, it's not it's not very legible. Can you make it large? Yep. Hopefully, this is helpful. It's just color coordinated by who's doing what, because uh, I'm getting help from our uh, municipal newsletter consultant and our digital media manager. Um, so, uh, this is going to continue to be in the municipal newsletter twice a week. Today's the first day the graphic will be in there. Uh, it's being put on the municipal website and municipal social media accounts. Uh, with multiple posts now of course that means you know you have to be following these which we know the majority of of our town the vast majority does not um so i'm also emailing those 40 community groups again um i emailed them twice for the uh community survey and at least 18 of them uh did some sort of action uh sent out uh you know on their mailing list on their newsletter so i expect um to see that again uh, we'll be posting flyers and giving them out to businesses again. Last time, I think uh, we went to over, we being me and one of my colleagues, uh, Lucia, um, we went to about 110 locations, businesses, <laughs> nonprofits, kiosks. Uh, we'll do that again. Um, we are sending out a press release next week uh, that'll go to 18 news outlets, uh, you know, the usuals and then some. Um, I'm working with our health and human services department uh, to notify people on WhatsApp um, and other ways that they've notified people, uh, particularly members of the Hispanic community that they work with throughout COVID. Um, one of the members of that department will attend the open house as well um, to both translate and to be a, a kind of comfortable uh, person that, uh, you know, a person that people are, are comfortable with um, through other experiences. Um, I will be going to meetings of the Transit Advisory Committee and the Human Services Commission next Wednesday, uh, Historic Preservation Commission on November 21st, and the Shade Tree Commission on November 29th. Um, if there are any other meetings you could think of or, or you can invite me to, I'd love to go. I actually have one at 315 today, uh, right after this. Um, I am speaking to that Princeton University class on the 14th. Um, and we are putting ads in the town topics the next two weeks. Um, I don't think we're going to do full page ones. Uh, we'll probably do quarter page ones with that graphic that was shown uh, over the next two Wednesdays. Um, and then I am hoping, I, and I need to uh, finalize this, to table in Heinz Plaza on the 19th and the 26th uh, and tell people to come out on the 30th. Um, so that being said, if there's any other suggestions, please let me know. Um, you know, obviously it's a tight time frame, but that just means we got to do things. Um, I, I just got a, a, the planning department finally has a tablecloth that we can put on our table. That I just bought that. So that's sitting in a box over here and says master plan. Uh, I'm running the half marathon on Sunday and I made myself a shirt that says master plan. So hopefully people see that. So uh, we gave out Halloween candy uh, and taped some of the, the flyers to them. So um, we're doing what we can to get the word out. And I see uh, two people have their hands up. I think Alvin and David. Um, very quickly, when you when you have the newspaper ad or whatever, I think you should specify this is the official site, the official um, venue for for the master plan. That somehow that should be at, at the top, or that should be in there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Tim said he would help us uh, create a poster. And I think I'll work with Tim if, if you're okay with that to, 
to make some of those changes and, and clarify things that aren't clarified in that graphic alone. And if you have a poster, we'll post it under the library so other people can grab it if they want to use it to promote as well. Oh, and one other thing I should mention too. Um, when we do those social media posts, and this idea actually came from Christine, um, I'll let the groups know and if you can share those uh, in addition to your own or, or in lieu of your own, um, that's very helpful. And David? Yeah, so um, this does look good uh, in terms of an out outreach plan. I think you're hitting all the, the right notes. Um, what I wanted to just briefly, well, maybe not too briefly mention as we did have some discussion, I think it was at the last planning board meeting uh, about the desirability of having some follow-up uh, online for the open house. In other words, you know, that the display boards, um, which will be shared at the open house, hopefully will be on the engagement hub. And hopefully there will be a way for people to participate virtually who couldn't make it to the open house. Um, I know that we have limitations with the way that we've set up the um, the engagement hub in terms of getting feedback from people, but I'd like to just ask the consultants to think about ways to be able to receive input um, from people who, you know, don't feel COVID safe coming to an event like this or whatnot. We can talk to um, Justin and uh, Mike and Elaine. We can talk to you about what we've done in other situations. I don't know that it was anticipated as part of our scope, but we absolutely have the ability to do it and understand the importance of it. So I think we just need to sort out how to work out some details, but yes, is the short answer. And I, I think another idea that we might wanna get into once we get through this event um, is maybe even opening up this meeting for you know 15 minutes of public questions at the end or, or something like that, um, we can discuss. And Louise? Um, David, thanks for raising that. <clears throat> and Susan, thanks for your, yes. <laughs> um, uh, Justin, could you talk a little bit about what you've um, discussed with Liliana and Cecilia about um, translating uh, for folks at the event? Definitely, yeah. I think we have a few levels to that. Um, first, uh, like Susan said, she is a bilingual member of her staff, which would be great if there are planning specific concepts, um, you know, to translate into Spanish. Uh, we have the member of Health and Human Services, which I think is great to, like I said, you know, have someone that knows the people already. Um, and then a member of my staff will be there to speak Spanish. Another member will be there to speak uh, Chinese. Um, and then uh, with Liliana and Cecilia, um, we've got to go more into it, but they've talked about having people go uh, to speak, uh, I think it was Spanish and Chinese as well. Um, and, you know, I think the more that we have that, the better. Um, in addition to just having uh, people, including steering committee members, um, floating around, you know, I, I don't think we're, we're looking to have any sort of formal sign up or, or anything like that. But if in addition to you, you know, looking at those boards for a half hour, you kind of wanted to mosey around and, and see people you know and maybe fill them in on how we got here or, or you know, if they have any procedural questions or anything like that, um, I, I think that'd be very helpful for uh, all steering com committee members to do. <clears throat> any other questions on the open house or the outreach plan? or suggestions? All right. And then Michael, I think we just had um, a general Q&A and you mentioned yeah. earlier on uh, the draft economic development report uh, will be sent out uh, most likely end of November, beginning of December. Right. The uh, draft report on the visioning survey will be mid-December. And then with the holidays and with all this information to digest, um, I think this group is probably not going to meet again until the end of January, um, but we will send out that information uh, between now and then. Right. And so, and so the focus of January, 
you know, just get looking ahead will be, you know, Q and A and distillation of the uh, the surveys uh, and the reports, and uh, also uh, a distillation of the open house. Now that's all we have on the agenda. Is there just any any and every uh, question that you might have? Okay. Just, Very nothing. Just, just, just as a, just to confirm, we are going to share our uh, our content with Kristen for review, and uh, and work with Kristen at this point. Uh, I, you of course too, Justin. But that's how we're going to deal with the content for the uh, open house. No, no. The request was to share it with all the steering committee members. Okay, share with all the steering committee. Fine. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, but and if we could give time to get comments back. Um, and then incorporate, you know, weigh those okay. comments. Thank you. All right. All right. Anything else today? We're done if y'all are done. If... All right. Thank you all for your time. I really do appreciate Thanks, it. Uh, much, feel free to call me or stop by if you have any any comments or concerns. All right. Okay. Justin, Thank will you. That, will the, Justin, will the meeting on the 25th be at the same time in the afternoon? I wanted to hold the time in my calendar if it's not already there. Yes, I think the 25th, and I don't have my 2023 calendar. I want to uh, say we're going back to two. That's one of the regularly scheduled 2 p.m. meetings, but I stand to be corrected on that. Yeah, that's so, correct. That's that's going back to our Wednesdays, fourth Wednesday at 2 p.m. And what time is it? 2 p.m., 2 to oh, 4. I already have it on my calendar. Great. Yeah. Thank you. That, <laughs> that'd be, I mean, if I hear otherwise from people, you know, we can always switch it to in the two and a half months. That's why I was late today. I thought it was at two o'clock until I looked at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, may I, that. May I, um, tomorrow is one hundredth anniversary of the American Legion, and there is American Legion post number two eighteen dedicated to Charles Robinson, who was the first black in Princeton to be killed in World War One, and um, they're having a rededication of the American Legion after a program that's going to be at the university at the chapel of noted uh, volunteer. Uh, could you talk about that? Um, uh, I don't know exactly what it is. I just know they're honoring ROTC. I think that's what it is, but um, it's going to be tomorrow. And because it's supposed to rain, it's gonna be held at Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church at 12 o'clock because he was a member of Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church. And I wanted to thank Louise and her husband because they're the ones who dedicated that plaque in front of the American Legion. Oh. So well, never that's very kind, Shirley. I, um, I'm sorry to miss that myself. I'm out of state right now. <clears throat> and I thought I might be coming back, but I'm still testing positive. So I'm going to sit tight outside of New Jersey until I'm completely... Well, uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm sorry to miss that. I hope I... Well, you'll be there in spirit and thank you. Yes, ma'am, I will. Thank you. We need to um, say thank you to all of our veterans. Yes. Good. Thanks. All right. Thanks, you all. Appreciate your Thanks. time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.